Today we were with Dana Callahan, entertainer, musician, and sound engineer from Kilimartra, West Cork, County Cork. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Mike. So how, are, uh, how are things in uh, West Cork? Well, we had a spectacular amount of fine weather here for the last maybe five weeks. But over the last, uh, just over the last few days, we've gotten heavy rain, but um, we got plenty sunshine time at the beach and you know, plenty of time to do all these things with the COVID pandemic around us. But uh, yeah. it's nice well, to get out and chill out. Speaking of beaches, what what's your favorite beach? I go to a tiny beach in West Cork. It's between Clannacilty and Kinsale. It's a place called Dunworley. And it's uh, it's a quiet beach. And it's yeah. a nice place to read your book and chill out and lie down in the sun. I, I was talking to Amanda Walsh the other day and uh, asked her the same question. And of course, uh, she said her I should know her favorite beach is Bally Bunyan Beach. So. But she was telling me about a little bit of the history of beaches there, especially uh, in the olden days, there were, were maybe a, a beach, a nun's beach where nuns would only be allowed to go. And then, then she also talked about men's beaches and women's beaches in the old days. How, how was Cork set up for, for those beaches? It was much the same way, but I suppose the most famous beach in Ireland wasn't so much a beach. It was in, in County Dublin. It was called the Forty Foot. And it was men only. And they just dive off the rocks and swim around there. But uh, if you if you YouTube it, I think you'll find when the women invaded it. You now, this was a, the Forty Foot was a bit particular because uh, you were in your only your Bertha suit was allowed. Right. So the women came as a form of protest. So they'd done the same. They stripped down. Oh, wow. And they jumped in with the men. And they actually, it was pretty, pretty heated at the time with the men that they shouldn't be allowed there. But yeah. eventually the women won their way. And then, um, of course, everybody wears swim, swim wear down also. But that oh. was the most famous one. We're it's in the 21st of, century now. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, was the most, that was the most famous one. It's called the 40 foot. Yeah. So let, Let's talk a little bit about music and uh, what you've been up to. Uh, have you learned any new tunes lately? I did at the start of the pandemic. I was very, very good. I was very disciplined and every night I would uh, sit down with a CD player and play some of my favorite CDs and some of my favorite tunes and pick them up. Uh, just with, with Irish music, you pick it up by ear. So um, I, do, I, I'm, I can read staff notation, but I'm not the quickest at it. I'm not up to speed for um, for playing tunes in it, but uh, with the CD and if you did have the staff notation, it makes it very easy. But uh, yeah, I was at that for a while. Um, maybe the first eight or nine months, I was very good. And then it gets very boring um, playing at home on your own. So you, like Irish music is designed to go to a corner of a bar or, or whatever on a little yeah. stage or whatever and play with your friends. So it's like what a conversation. Tell me a little bit about the uh, unusual names for tunes. Uh, like, for example, I'm I'm actually attempting to learn every day on the box uh, a Brit the britches full of stitches. Stitches, yeah. So that's an unusual name for a tune, I think. They have there's all this very weird names in some of the tunes, you know. Uh, there's there's a jig which I thought this is one that stood out to me the most. It's a jig, and it was played by Planksty, and it was called "I Buried My Wife and Danced on Top of Her." Oh <laughs> which boy! Is very, it's a terrible name of a tune, but uh, it is there. It does exist in Lee Mogo Flynn, that great piper. God rest him. He was uh, he, that was one of his favorite tunes. There's several more. There's the the Otter's Holt. There's the several, several. A lot of them, a lot of the big tunes in would have, uh, like they'd be called Connell Frazier's or Lord McDonald's and all that. They had a lot to do with the uh, music that came in with the uh, with the military, you know. So yes, they're, they're yeah, big and, tunes. and I guess the, the dance numbers are. Uh, I, I'm familiar with the, the Siege of Venice and the Walls of Limerick seem to be named after battles. Yes, yeah, and they were all to do, they were mostly to do with keeping the, the, the men on the ships fit, 
they'd play music and keep them dancing. Uh, that was kind of a, a way of getting fit and having a bit of fun getting fit. Yeah. But yeah, it was kind of, I think it originally came with the Spanish. When the Spanish were trying to, the Spanish Armada were trying to invade England and they got such a pounding that they had to sail up around England and on the way back down on the west coast of Ireland. Uh, oh, the weather was so bad, they got shipwrecked and all that. So right. a lot of their music came in that time. Right. It's many years and, ago now. And uh, well, let's move on to uh, Kill the Martra. And uh, I understand that I've actually visited the Metal Toy Soldier Factory there. And how's that going? It's a wonderful place to visit. It, it's kind of a hidden gem. It, not many people really know about it. And when they discover it, they really enjoy visiting there. It is open for business. They have uh, they have signs up open for business and vaccine are COVID safe. Uh, Everybody is vaccinated there. So, but you have to uh, at the moment, like everything, you have to book. You have to book to go there because of numbers and social distancing and all that. But uh, it's improving every every week over here. Things are getting better, and of course, the vaccine is still being. Um, distributors to the people here so they're down now i think they're down now to uh between they're down to 13 and 15 year olds now with the vaccination i don't know how far down they're going to go i think they're talking about going mm-hmm. to 10 years old or something like that yeah. so. now, now i understand uh, this week uh, indoor dining opened up and the restaurants open and uh now is Mercus a restaurant or a pub or both it's a pub it's known as a wet pub. Uh, you can get look, he 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 will do you a slice of pizza or a cup of tea and a biscuit or a sandwich or whatever. But uh, he's not famous for his food. Uh, you, you, there's more. There's there's many many places nearby. I suppose the most famous one would be the Mills Inn in Balavorny, which was again, which is um, it was one of the first pubs in Ireland to serve bar food. So back oh, yeah. in the nineteen seventies. But Omorakusa is basically a bit of music, a bit of fun, and maybe sing song. Yeah. And plenty, they have plenty of the tree stouts. They have Guinness, Beamish, and Murphy's. All right. And I, yeah. you might you might explain uh, the Irish word Murko, the Irish language word Murko, the name Murko. Omoraku is the Gaelic uh, surname for uh, Murphy. Yeah. And uh, the O comes from uh, the O and the Mac comes from uh, there were clans or there were families yeah. of the Morcos or families of the Morphys or I'm all Callahan so I'm of the Callahans and yeah. they would get they kind of determined what part of Ireland you came from way back in the day so I think my family came from County Clare originally from uh, Callahan's Mills oh. when they've been the when they've been the, uh, yeah. the clan you, you know so would you say Kill the Martra is in the heart of the, the, the Grail Talk. The uh, Grail Talk. Uh, it it is. Um, Kill the Martra is one of. There's four villages here that are in the Grail Talk. You have Ballingeri, Bela Hungeri, you have Kill the Martra, you have Balavurni, and you have Kule, and it's known collectively as the Musgri Grail Talk. And um, it is pretty strong. Now, it, it, the schools are very strong. But as you can understand, people come in here and build houses that don't speak Irish. So it it did, it is it is diluted down in, in areas, you know, especially the farther east you go because people like to live in these places and they may be walking Cox City, but um, they don't. Their kids will be learning Irish, but they don't. Yeah. And are they the uh, I guess have the, the Irish sorts. Yeah. Are the markets uh, open for business? I guess you have a lot of outdoor. Farmers markets and and such and in Bantry and other places. Yeah, we have, we have, yeah. Bantry, Kinmere, and Macroom are the three big ones around here. Uh, Bantry, Macroom is every Tuesday. Bantry is every Friday, and Kinmere I think is once a month, as far as I know. But Bantry and Macroom are the two big ones, yeah. And they're thank God they're back on the streets and they're able to do their wheeling and dealing. And for a while there, it was they were it was pretty grim to go to Macroom and you know had no. You had no town markets, and they're famous for them. You know the town yeah. markets back in the day. People I think sold I, their wares. We have some uh, souvenirs from the Ken Mayer market uh, in our house. 
from our yes. trips to Ken Mayer and uh, great, great crafts, uh, great, uh, the artwork and the artisan food is just wonderful over there in West Cork. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So mm -hmm. some of the stalls are fabulous. They do unbelievable cheese and olives and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And how's, how's your friend uh, up there with the uh, the Buffalo farm doing? How's he doing? He's doing very well. He's after um, he's after starting tours now again, but not big coaches full of tours. The numbers are small. I think he, I'm not sure what kind of numbers he can take, maybe 15 or 20 people, but they have started doing tours again on the buffalo farm and he said that it didn't it didn't really affect him actually the cheese sales the mozzarella sales went through the roof actually because people were preparing food more at home more than um, than before you know people a lot of people were dining out but that all came to a sudden stop when when every all the restaurants were closed so people were cooking in their own homes yeah. So he got yeah, it was good for him. I, overall, he said the the cheese cheese production went went up a nice few percent. So yeah, yeah I was talking to him a bit ago, and he's he's busy, busy, and he has another woman. Then he has a woman running the tours on the farm. So he good. said that she's she's well, back. Now, I'm I'm going to take a trip down memory lane with you, and uh, I've been testing some of my Irish friends. Uh, about Guglenbera. We had we had a nice visit there with, with you and took our tour group over to Guglenbera. Uh, a beautiful spot there. And, and that, that is that considered West Cork? That is uh, just at the boundary of West Cork. You're, you're in a place called uh, the Pass of Cayman E, which is a pass through um, the mountains there. And uh, Kogan Barra would be part of the mountains. Yeah, you're just on the border there. I see. Just yeah. The and so I've been testing my Irish friends' knowledge, uh, history knowledge of, of Gugan Barra. So uh, I've asked them to guess the, what, how we, we named our dog, what, what name we gave our dog. And I gave them the hint and I said, Gugan Barra. And I said, that's your hint. What, what person, what historical person is associated with Guggenberra? And now, if I'm mistaken, I may be wrong, uh, but I think it's Finbar, St. Finbar. St. Finbar is the patriot saint of Cork County. He was there in the sixth century. Uh, uh, Guggen is actually the name of the place and Finbar. So they joined the two of them, Guggen Barra. Oh, good. good. Yeah. That's very close. Yeah. Yeah. So we named our uh, dog Finbar, which I think is a good, good, strong name for a dog. And uh, he's always, perhaps next year, we may, able, may be able to visit Gugon Barra. With you have to bring Finbar with you. Yeah. Now you should take him to Cox City, then to the, into the cathedral, into St. Finbar's Cathedral. Have a look right. at that. Right. It's supposed to be right. beautiful stained glass on that. Um, hey. Yeah, he, he's our. Yeah, yeah now he, he's our uh, our company mascot. So we're putting putting him to work to promote our our company. So he'll he'll be wearing some uh, nice fine clothes here in the winter time, uh, displaying our, our company logo and everything. Oh, very good. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Um, well, let's see what what else. Uh, well, I'm gonna ask you. An important question here. What, in your opinion, would be the top three things that County Cork is famous for? Top three. Um, Cork I mean, is famous. famous for a lot of things, but the top three that come to mind. I suppose if you're if you're looking, if you look up the first one that will come always up on the screen will be the Blarney Stone. And uh, the second one will be uh, Middleton Distillery, the whiskey makers. Good choice. And I would say the third, the third thing probably would be the beaches of West Cork, I would say. Um, of course, there's several more things. There's, there's lots of more things, but um, Cork City then has the English market as well. So there's lots of stuff, right. you know. 
It depends. Mm-hmm. It depends what mood you're in and where you want to go and what you want to do. I mean, if you're not a whiskey drinker, there's no point in going to Middleton Distillery. Yeah. And if you don't want, if you're not, if you're afraid of heights, there's no point in going to the Blarney Stone. But they're all, uh, like the Blarney Stone is very safe. It's all railed off or whatever. It's like very very safe. And then of course, the Middleton whiskey. That's very safe as well as long as you behave yourself and don't drink too much whiskey. But right. And I, and I know there's a, a bit, bit of competition between uh, Murphy's, Beamish, and Guinness as a favorite favorite stout in County Cork. And I, I think there's some yeah. there's some loyalty. I think in County Cork there's loyalty to Murphy's and Beamish. Is that, they is that are, true? Yeah, the two the two of them are made in Cork City. Um, they're made. They're now made out the, the Mallow Road in Cork City. Uh, it was Murphy's Brewery. They bought um, Beamish and Crawford. Ah, it's going back now about fifteen years. But the Beamish and Crawford were, were right in the heart of the city, and um, they were in a place called North Main Street. And uh, their brewery, the the original brewery house, is still there. But as you well know. The rest of the brewery was torn down and they put in new complex there or whatever. So, you know, it's the same. Mm-hmm. It was prime location, basically, in the, the smack in the center of the city. Mm-hmm. So they and, couldn't resist the, the, the money, I suppose. And what's your favorite? Uh, I like Beamish. I would, Beamish would be my favorite. Yeah, yeah I think I've had all three and uh, certainly you can uh, taste a difference. And yes, it, it's an acquired taste. It takes a bit of time. And it seems that uh, Murphy's and Beamish, in some way, may be a little smoother. Uh-huh. Or, and it may be, in fact, be a little creamier. Uh, but that was mostly, yeah. yeah. I've, I've well, only I, had I, it a few times, but uh, there is a, you can definitely, they, they all taste good. I'll, I'll have yeah. any one of them anytime. So. I, I will say one thing, if you're in Dublin City, the Guinness is extremely good at because um, yeah. competition is so high and the Guinness is just made down the road, so mm. it doesn't travel too far. Now, how are the, what's the price of the pint these days? The Beamish is a tree, the Beamish is 360. Uh, and uh, that's three euro sixty cents. The Guinness and the Murphys, I think, are four euros twenty cents. And but again, that changes if you go to the city. It's more expensive because they have to pay higher rates for their properties and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. in Dublin, I mean, you can pay up to you can pay up to seven or eight euros for a pint of Guinness in Dublin on a Saturday night. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll stay in the west and uh, in in the rural areas where the prices are better. And the uh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And I I, yeah. I believe that the public the pub owners and the the bartenders take good care of uh, of the of the a stout of the of the pints to make sure they're fresh and creamy all the time. Oh, they have to. Yeah, uh, they have no customers if it's not if it's not good beer. They just People go to the next pub, you know. Yeah. Well, I know I'm going to share with you. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of dating myself now, but when I was in Dublin in the late '70s, uh, I remember a, a pint was 36 pence, and and my friends would uh, change. They would go to a different pub for two reasons. Number one. If the if they thought that the the Guinness was better in another pub, they would prefer to go to that other pub where the Guinness was better. But more importantly, if it was one or two pence less expensive, <laughs> they, they would save one or two pence going to a different pub. I, I mean, I, I went around with these guys, and uh, that's how we operated. That's how we we went uh, on our pub crawls. Yeah, so, that's kind of changed now because of. Uh... I suppose back in them, them days, people didn't have a lot of money, but now we are. I mean, we 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 went through a we went through a tough time there in two thousand and eight. We had an economic crash. Most of the world had the Western world, but now it's back up and and, and it's good again. You know, so people don't good. really worry about good. they don't really worry about fifty cents at the end of the night. You know, so yeah. I mean, if you can find a a pint that's uh, twenty five cents cheaper, 
then maybe save that 25 cents going to a different pub perhaps yeah yes that's <laughs> so well listen dan it's been a pleasure talking to you i know uh i see the sun is still shining out there in the evening so you have some long long days uh what, what what time does the, the sun set there in July and August these days? Um, we're looking at approximately 10 o'clock in the evening at the moment. Um, yeah, it, well, the 21st of June there it can be up to 10.30 or 10.45, you know. Right. So you can still you can still get around at 11 o'clock. Yeah, the days are long. And, days are long. Uh, and they stay up late. And uh, that's, that's the fun... The Irish culture is, is known for its uh, late nights and in the summertime, yeah. Because in the winter, nights. my God, in the winter, in the winter, it's it's dark here. It's three thirty, four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, Dan, yes. I hope, hope we could do this again, maybe next month or the month after, and um, you know, stay in touch and give our regards to all our friends in Cork. I sure and, will. And especially Donnie McCarthy. Our, our favorite uh, bus company. I sure will. I probably see him in the near future. Good, good. And we'll uh, say so long for now. And I'll be talking to you next month and uh, catch up on things. And we're looking forward to coming over there and seeing you uh, next June. We have a lot of people waiting to go and ready to go. Yeah. And we just have to uh, get those flights coming into Shannon again. We're waiting please to hear. God, no, please God, yeah, everything goes goes back to normal because uh, it's been a long time. So people are are ready to have some fun again and get out and about and meet the people. A absolutely, we're just going to uh, uh, double things and triple things and and keep going. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, Dan. We'll see you again. Okay. Uh, thanks, thanks to your your brother, brother-in-law. Thank you for his IT support. Yeah, I'm, that's not my strong point. <laughs> I'll catch up with you later. In regards okay. to Michael, in regards to Mike. Uh, okay, I, I'll see them. Yeah, Mike Gallivan, and yeah, we'll I'll be talking you. to him. See you, Dan. Okay, Mike. All Bye. the best. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.